It's winter, guys. It's very, very important that we clean our Berkey today. Stick with me in this video, and I'm going to show you just how dirty our Berkey has gotten over the past year. This is our first big snowfall of the winter time. Uh, we had one that was not that long ago, but it was just real kind of a dusting. We may get like, you know, four or five, six inches on this one. And then there's another smaller storm coming in in a couple days after that, after today. So um, just walking around the homestead, there's our root cellar we're working on. And um, out here by the woodshed. You know, the reason this is important this time of year for our Berkey is because we have this water system here. This tank right here holds 1,500 gallons and it provides all the water for our home, actually for both of our homes. So this water tank, when it gets as cold as it's gonna to get tonight, probably in you know 20 degrees or less, uh, probably in that way at night for like the next few days at least, these lines have to be drained. So we drain these lines, it comes out of here, goes into the ground, down, and then up over here for us, right about there, or, no, I'm sorry, right over, right over there, <laughs> right there by the stairs, and it comes up into the house, and there's a valve there, and we close off those valves, we can drain the valves, and we drain it from here, and so the lines are clear. Well, those lines collect sediment throughout the year as that water is moving through, just the tiniest amount of sediment, and when it freezes and thaws, even if the line is drained, there's still a small amount of water in there, and when that freezes and thaws, it picks up that sediment and carries it down the line the next time that these lines are filled with water. And so we get a ton of sediment that comes from those lines the next time we run our lines and get water into the house. And all of that water is part of our drinking water system, which goes into our Berkey. And boy, does it get that Berkey dirty. But the Berkey is so good and it clears all that debris out. And so the drinking water we have is very clean. But those filters need to be cleaned at least once a year and so today i'm going to take you inside we're going to show you just how dirty those filters have gotten and then we're going to clean them and i'm going to show you how we clean them here on our homestead hey guys welcome to the homestead so today we're going to take apart our berkey we're going to clean it i'm going to show you how just how dirty this thing gets uh with the water that we use we filter it with for our drinking water uh, we're going to take it apart we have the largest berkey they make it's the crown berkey it holds up to eight filters I don't have eight filters in there because I'm not a millionaire. Those things are expensive, but they work and they work tremendously well. So what we do every year is that once we clean our Berkey, we will then put it all back together. And then part of a science project that my son does, he'll do water tests on the Berkey, on the water that it filters to make sure that it's still filtering properly. So we'll go through some of those details in a little bit. But first, let's take the Crown Berkey uh, take the top off, take the filters out, and look at just how dirty these filters can get. So here's the top of our Crown Berkey. Uh, if you look down in there, it's pretty dirty. I know you can't see from where the camera's at now, but we're going to zoom in. This thing is filthy. I've got four filters in there. Let's go ahead and pull them out, and I'll give you a closer look. It's kind of a dreary day today because of the snow coming down, you know, overcast skies. It just makes the inside of the house pretty dark, and so I have the lighting... Um, on the camera turned up as high as possible so look and see what let's see what we got here all right I'm gonna lay that first one down there take out the other one pretty dirty now if you didn't know these end pieces will wear out sometimes these uh, screws here these nuts and these uh, washers these foam washers you'll need to replace these I, I replace them once a year, okay? And then I order new ones to replace those because these will squish, they'll wear out, and what happens is water ends up getting around them and then filtering down into your water. It doesn't, doesn't filter, it just goes around and gets down into your, your drinking water. And so that's one of the reasons we test our water um, on a sort of regular basis to make sure that the filters are still doing their job and that these washers haven't worn out. Uh, it's one of the things I think that Berkey lacks the company itself, they really should advise their customers that some of these things need to be replaced or they should, you know, build better ones because they do wear out and, um, you know, water can get around them and then you're not really filtering anything. And for someone who's living in an environment where, you know, these 
this water could be uh, containing harmful bacteria or viruses or whatever, uh, that's kind of important. So these things also wear out. They kind of bend. I'll show you that probably closer up in a minute. Now, just because of the lighting, it's kind of hard to see all the dirt on there, but there is a lot of dirt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take up this paper towel here, and I'm going to pick this up and just kind of rub it like a corn on the cob and butter. Let's just go ahead and rub it on there. Look at all that dirt. Look at that. That's what that water is passing through to get to the filter part to get down to where you can drink it. That's all the dirt on there. That's amazing. Look at that. Just take my hand on that. Look at that. That's crazy. That's insane. All right, so we're going to clean each one of these filters. <laughs> That's crazy. So what we're going to do is just take a scotch pad, easy scotch pad with a little bit of our natural soap on it that we use and just scrub that in there. Scrub it on there. Oh, lots of dirt coming off here. Lots of dirt. Just give that a good scrubbing all around and run some water through it. Look at all that dirt. What a mess. I don't know if you can see all that. We'll do this for each one of the filters. Make sure you get the tops too. They're pretty dirty. Yeah, you can see that dirt. Look at all that. Can you see all that dirt down in the sink there? Look at all that. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to really open up the pores of these filters. Uh, with every filter that you buy, you get one of these little donut things, okay? It's in a box. It comes in the box that these come in. They come in pairs and you get these little donut things. And what these are for, many people don't realize that these are for cleaning. These help you clean and they originally help you get your filters primed so that you can use them. One of the many complaints I get when it comes to Berkey, people who say, hey, you know what? I got my Berkey, but it just doesn't filter very fast. I don't, I don't really like this thing. Well, did you prime it? Well, what do you mean? Well, you have to read the instructions. <laughs> the instructions tell you to prime it, and there's this little donut thing inside here included with your filters that allow you to prime your filters, and that gets them ready to filter, and it filters much, 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 much faster. It also helps it when you want to clean it. So we've just rubbed up all the dirt off the outside of our filter. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put this up by the sink. And we're going to put the little donut on top of the filter like so. Just like that. Fits there very nicely. It's got to just fits in there perfect. And then you put this up against the faucet and you begin to pump. And pushes water down through here, forces it out of the filter, which cleans all of those pores. There's a little dirt and sediment that we, you know, rubbed into it. Well, now we want to force all that dirt and sediment that we rubbed off. Now, obviously, some of it came off, but a lot of that is still in those pores. And by forcing that water down through here and out, it cleans those pores, which helps you have a better filtering product. So when we clean it, we're done cleaning it. Let's go ahead and put it under the sink. I'll show you how I do this, and I'll show you how the water comes out and it cleans those pores. All right, so what I have now is this donut pressed right up against the faucet. And I'm gonna press down on the pump and you're gonna see all the water come out. Here we go. Oop, sprayed out the faucet a little bit. See how the water's coming out? You're cleaning those pores. Water is coming out. Excellent, let's do the next one. So just like on the last one, you put the donut on the top here like that. And then you're gonna press it up against the faucet. Just like that and press down. You can see the water coming out of there. See that? As I pump the water into there, it's, it's pushing the water through the filter, the pores of the filter. See that now? When I release this, it's going to spray everywhere. <laughs> I get a little splash. Now the next thing I want to show you are these little wire nuts that they put uh, on top of the filters. You can't, it's hard to tell, hard for the camera to pick this up, but this one is slightly deformed. And this is one of the reasons why I think you need to replace these things at least once a year, just to make sure you're getting a good filter, a good seal on your filters in your Berkey. Um, you can't really, it's hard for the camera to pick it up, but it is deformed a little bit. So I'm going to open up some of my replacements and put those and replace these wing nuts, uh, just so I know I'm getting a good seal. And I'm going to replace the little foam washers as well. The foam washers that they give you after about a year, they're really spongy, they're really flexible, they're not very firm anymore. And so, yeah, I'll replace these as well. 
the little washers and wing nuts come in packs like this. You just order a couple of these packs and have some on hand whenever you need them. It's good to have more than you actually need just in case you, for some reason, there was a shortage ever and you couldn't get any more. It's always good to have a few extras of these on hand. And I do. Um, so now that I've used these, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the replacements. Even though I have more replacements, I will replace the ones that I just used. Uh, it's good to be smart like that, especially in the days we live in. It's a good idea also while these filters are out to go ahead and clean out the bottom of that thing. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but it's disgusting and needs definitely be, to be cleaned out. So some things to remember going forward, make sure you clean your filters at least once a year. Make sure you back pressure them in order to clean out the pores of the filter. It's gonna make it work more efficiently and quicker. And it's always good to have some spare parts for this guy. Some wing nuts, some of the washers, maybe some extra filters. Uh, it's a crazy world out there. You don't wanna to have to go find some of these spare parts in a world where you can't get them easily and readily available online. So now is the time to stock up on some things that you might need in the future. All right, guys, before you go, hit that like button. It's a free and easy way that you can help out the homestead. I really, really appreciate when you hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you hit the bell button for all so, so you get notified for all of our videos. I really appreciate that as well. And check out our merch over at teespring.com. Uh, some of our shirts, the Freedom shirts and others are available. Link in the description below. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Leave a comment, hit a like, and I'll see you next time on an American Homestead. Bye. Hey guys, I'm happy to introduce an American Homestead sponsor, Zervita Zeal. Now, first off, I only accept sponsors from products that I use and believe in. My family uses Zeal mainly because we want to ensure a healthy immune system. You see, it's made up of only whole food concentrates and includes no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. The included sweetener is all natural from fruit and the stevia leaf. It's gluten-free, it's vegan, and it's kosher. In 2018, my youngest son was involved in a bike accident that resulted in the surgical removal of his spleen, and that's an important part of his immune system. And because we live on a farm, you can guess that having a healthy immune system for our family is very important. Some of the included ingredients are beetroot, chicory root, turmeric, moringa, blueberries, cranberry, goji berry, milk thistle, ginseng, alfalfa, broccoli, and so much more. It's these natural ingredients that can easily be made into a powerful and tasty drink that my family can make and feel good about. So sign up and give it a try today. Every purchase you make goes to help the homestead so that we can continue to make great homesteading videos for you. Link is in the description below. Go ahead, give it a try. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>